Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de do day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guests, Armelia McQueen and Patrick Richwood, to the show. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. It's so Thank wonderful you. to ha- to talk to you again. It's been, I think, four years since we did uh, we had an attempt of, at a group call to talk with everybody oh in oh, yeah. Adventures oh, in Wonderland. <laughs> that but, was so much fun, Tim. That was actually so much fun talking to everybody again. It, it really was. was. It, it was. It you was, know, we don't organize that. You know how it is. Well, we haven't seen each other in quite some time. Patrick and I see each other the most. You know, so, you know, we used yeah. to have lunch and when he comes in town and I haven't been back in New York since, uh, you know, uh, the summer, but, I, but we didn't see each other. But uh, the two of us see each other and talk and want and, and catch up. We with get everybody. together whenever I'm in town. We, we, right. We and get, we catch up. Queens like my sister. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. work at the Mickey Mouse Club. We did the, Tammy, we did the inauguration <laughs> for Bill Clinton, the second inauguration. We were asked to go yes. as part of a contingent of um, entertainers of children and we went at the show almost all of us went to the show to and to perform at kennedy center for all these people for the, that part of the inauguration it was really fun kermit yeah. was there and you know like it was a big deal and and um hillary clinton was there and everything and um we were i remember we were working with uh, like there was the current mickey mouse club was there Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking about them. Well, Adventures in Wonderland was such a groundbreaking television show in my mind because, first of all, you have such a great, diverse group of cast members who can sing, dance, act. You guys got to put your own spin on these characters. Now, was was that kind of the pitch that was given to you at auditions? Uh, for me, no. They never said anything about it. It's just that I think once I started working um, as the queen... I mean, she just had, the writing was so wonderful and so comic. And, and you couldn't be too mean because you, you wanted to give a, a positive message to the audience. You know, you didn't want to scare the kids. And they, we they, thought our audience was going to be younger than it turned out to be. I mean, no. all of us, including the producers, Tammy, thought the audience would be pre-adolescent. And it turned out that kids were watching it into like 12 and 13 and then, because their parents were watching it. Their parents thought it was funny. Yeah. And so... We got so it, many it, letters it, saying, we, that we, I think this is funnier than my kid does. And everybody brought a lot to the table. And so Disney just kind of let us go with it, you know. Well, we had a great time. It was just hard work. I mean, because it certainly was two scripts. Such week. hard work. Yeah, hard work. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and we're talking about 90 pages, 70 pages, with uh, uh, four numbers in each of the... Uh, the uh, shows and so you end up doing like eight numbers and yeah. and and filming them all within one week it's two episodes a week and and you guys are working on yeah. the back lot originally at mgm studios i think tammy stop me if i've told you this but i think we've talked about this the week would consist of not only us reading and learning camera blocking and learning or creating the current two episodes we would be um we would be laying down the, tr- we would be learning songs for two weeks in advance and we would be laying down track for songs the following week. And we would be singing on stay on the set, on the sound stage in the current week, the songs we learned two weeks ago and recorded last week. So we were, busy and then we were re- we would in between in between camera blocking we would be in the bungalow or wherever with patty colombo learning choreography so yeah. everything was keeping your brain firing on all pistons because really you were utilized all the time and then fold into that poor liz who had to in between everything 
in between all those things, be at school. On a break, when we were on a break or whatever, she was at school. You know, everybody was really fast on their feet. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, it, was, it sure. was like memorizing the phone book. You know, so uh, <laughs> when you really, when you left uh, Adventures in Wonderland and went to another show and they gave you the script for that show, you would have learned it the, at the first table read. Yeah. Seriously, that's well, how fast like everybody it, yeah. had gotten. Adventures in Wonderland made a, was a training against everything else. It's kind of like when you've lived in New York City, every other city in the world is easy. Nothing will ever be difficult to figure out because I live in New York. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Even though we've over the years we've all made a fuss about what a interesting and difficult challenge that job was for each and every one of us, because each and every one of us had their own unique challenges that made it a very hard job. Yeah. But when, you know, lots of things are like that when you are an actor. It's like there's lots of jobs where where you're like, this is I can't believe I'm doing this, and I'm doing it. You know, like I remember one time. Being, I did a medieval picture, and I was on a horse in a suit of armor, real armor, that they made um, in the middle of the black forest with mosquitoes the size of chihuahuas, you know, <laughs> going ding against the armor in the, in the heat of summer while they reset the lights for, you know, whatever, on horseback. And I kept thinking, I would think, it's not as hard as the bunny suit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so people would always from then forward. People are always like, "You're such a professional. You never complain or anything." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, nothing's hard as the body." What? Well, yeah, because you've been through it. You've been through it. My friend Jimmy came um, to the set. Jimmy Divis, Queen, a wonderful actor. Tammy, wonderful, wonderful actor. Was in the original Pacific Overtures on Broadway. Stephen Sondheim's Pacific Overtures on Broadway. He's an old friend. And he came to the set one day with his movie camera. And he, he captured all these things. I must find that because that would be really extraordinary to see and to put online. If, if he, with his permission, if everybody agreed. Because it was really interesting. And when he followed me into my dressing room when we wrapped that day. And watched as Bobby, that was my dresser, Tammy, that's some really... Uh, um, invaluable guy who was an associate of ours who, who he he was my dresser he was the one who helped me get into this get up and get out of it and he was there every minute with water and you know a fan and all that stuff on the set anyway Jimmy Divis <laughs> uh, videoed as Bobby peeled this costume off of me bit by bit until it was just skinny me and we took this um, there was a like a, a lycra sort of cotton jumpsuit with these big pouches with zippers and inside those were foam, like, you know, the shape of the rabbit, like the belly yeah. and the haunches. And mm-hmm. the, we rang it out for him. We took it outside and rang it out and it just poured water out of it. And I, you can hear Jimmy on the video because I haven't seen it in years and years and years, but I remember you can hear Jimmy on the video go, wow. <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> we know, it, it, it oh was just God. amazing. It was amazing, and but you know, out of that, out of that whole experience, um, everybody learned a great deal. I mean, I think uh, John Hoffman uh, writes, oh, and yeah. I think he became even quicker uh, in his writing and and developing, and and um, and our, our costume people and our hair people uh, mm-hmm. are in Vegas. You know, doing some of the yeah, big that's shows. Right. That, you know, and, doing and some of the big Kish, shows. The hair out person, there. She won an Emmy for the show. She's yeah. in Florida. Yeah. We're still in touch. You know, when you sit And down. also the guest stars. Think about the guest stars. Oh, we had lots of guest stars. Well, yeah. Amelia, you got yeah. to work with Terry Gar a lot because she was uh, the Duchess. Terry Gar. Yes, she that's does. right. She, yes, she we was. worked with Terry. And then I worked with Terry a couple more times after that on movies. Uh-huh. Terry Gar. Gilbert else? Gottfried, oh, uh, Willie Nelson. Gilbert Gottfried. Well, and also Pat Sajak, Marley Matlin. Marley Matlin. Yeah, because yeah, we had to learn to sign. Right. That's right. You, you know. know what? I went and saw Marley Matlin in Spring Awakening here in New York on Broadway. And she was so sensational. It was a really beautiful, beautiful revival of the show. And mm-hmm. I totally mm-hmm. forgot that she had done Wonderland. Or I would have gone backstage and said, guess who I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had a good time because most of them had not worked like that before. 
you know, yeah. or they work like that in college or whatever. Because when you come on, you know, some people were told that, oh, don't worry about it. You know, you just kind of go along and you don't have to worry about singing so much after you lay the track down. Oh, you mean and, you're talking about they never worked at that pace with that kind yes, of machine and yes. motion? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember and, Terry Gar saying that? Yeah, Terry Gar, yeah. She can't, yeah. Tammy, she was in rehearsal for a whole week, her first week. She did about six or ten weeks with us. I forget now. Yes, the Duchess. Six. And six. six. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so eight, uh, what's that, 12 episodes. And um, she, we, we were in rehearsal, you know, and that's already hard because you're doing all those things that I said. And then she, she, she walks onto the set the first day at, you know, 8 a.m. or whatever. <laughs> And you wouldn't believe, Tammy, you really wouldn't believe it. It, would, it, it even sent chills up my spine sometimes um, because the whole machine would just grind into motion and suddenly these two giant sound stages would light up with all this gorgeous fantasy, you know, the forest high and everything, yeah. cycloramas with the forest and the sky and that you would believe it. And, I mean, it was big even, it always... Sets always look smaller when you walk onto them because on TV the illusion is that they go on forever. But Mm -hmm. even in person, these sets were large. And people would say, oh, my God, it's just like Oz. I remember Terry being like, at the end of that day, being like, I don't, what have I done? I can't believe you people do this. I can't believe you all do this. She was stunned. (laughs) And we were like, we're going to do it two more times this week. (laughs) Yeah, we we said, oh, yeah, you can still got a few more days. But I remembered when (laughs) what was so much fun (laughs) is that she uh, came out as a duchess, of course, who she was. And she started, uh, you know, her music came on. And she was just going around and (laughs) spinning with her gown and whatnot. And we said, you have to sing. And she's like, what? (laughs) You've got to sing. You have to mouth what you've sung. And she was like, what? And then uh, it, she was like, really, like, I can't believe this. And then she started singing with it. And then she got into it, you know. But it was like, oh, no, 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 no. She mastered it, of course. You know, yeah, she, she mastered it. But at first it was like, you've got to sing, Duchess, sing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, uh, I would, and, of course, as the queen, I would say it. I'd sit on the throne and yell at her, you know. <laughs> and we just had the best fun. The best fun. Yeah, it really know? was <laughs> but, um, you know, we even though it was a hard job, Kenny, we all knew we were having a really good time of our life. We were yeah. having so much fun. I mean, it really yeah. was a fun, unique, one of a kind job. I mean, how, you know, <laughs> when am I ever going to again get the opportunity to play the big shot? I don't Holy know. This rabbit. <laughs> when are you, Queen, going to ever be the, you know, this egomaniacal? <laughs> Yeah, character again. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's I can't tell you that. I'm Listen, uh, Tammy, when we were in Florida, we of course being uh, New Yorkers and and people that lived in LA, you know, we're very free so- souls and spirits and whatnot. We're in Florida on the Disney lot. They are yeah. a little more reserved, oh, yeah. and they would see a, a Patrick <laughs> skating. Ah, Patrick would be skating on the break or either on lunchtime, <laughs> and I of course couldn't ride a bike. So I'd get on the bike uh, with all my gowns and my crowns, and I'd be riding a (laughs) three-wheeler, passing by all of the offices with the two dresses. And she'd go like this. She'd go, hello. hello." (laughs) And the two dresses. Hello. The dresses running behind me, trying to make sure I don't fall off. And then (laughs) we would have all the visitors that would be in the cars looking, and they would follow me. (laughs) And I would just be (laughs) laughing. And I was like, I can't ride this bike, but... It was just fun I learning to do it. It was, it was very difficult um, <laughs> uh, when we got ready to leave because we had formed such a unit with everybody down in Florida, all the crew, yeah. you know, and and with us. And uh, we started there, and everybody knew everyone else's timing, the crew I'm talking about now. And so when we came to L.A. and worked on the soundstage over there on over at CBS, uh, we um, we had to almost help them learn the routine of the show being so fast, you know. That's and, true. That's true. It really was, and so they they finally got it. One of my favorite aspects of the show is the relationship between the White Rabbit and the Red Queen, which both of you portray. You know, the Red Queen uh, to me was just this 
woman who was driven and knew what she wanted and 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 when when the time had to be a, like a soft moment you know whether it be between her or Alice or the white rabbit it really was meaningful she was like the mother of wonderland and i really appreciated yeah. uh, you know yeah. that type of character and and the white rabbit was just so loyal so working off of one another it just to me was was a wonderful different relationship between two characters that probably despise one another in the film We're, so We've been we've been sister and brother ever since, haven't we, Queen? Really, we yeah, have. yeah, yeah. On, on, on I mean, but set, we didn't know each other when we started. No, we didn't, had never met. No, no, no. But uh, it was so great because working with Patrick, we, you know, once we found each other and we realized that we, you know, because the rabbit and the queen was separate family when we first started out. Right. You know, and then. Right. Uh, then of course uh, she goes into the forest, and the rabbit already had a relationship with all the animals, and and the and the Tweedledum and Tweedledum, and she had a relationship with them, but she always had to be stoic, but she really wanted to play with them, you know, like the you know, and but she was the boss, you know, you played uh, 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 checkers with but her, see, that's and she what- won. That's you how know. come you in created that. That's how come people remember your character, Amelia. Be- and I think this is why they remember all the characters because they managed to pull together a cast of people who come from the theater where you you're figuring out how to tell us a, a real story, like a play, yeah. and you got to be embody a person. A lot of people without that kind of experience would create a red queen who's just mean and funny mm-hmm. about, and it's mm-hmm. funny to watch, you know, and she keeps mm-hmm. getting boiled, but you created all this dimension where, you know, there was all this underneath, there was all this, I want to play too. And that's true. And it's also, we, um, we developed really quickly, Tammy, like she, queen, McQueen and I developed really quickly a kind of, um, understanding where it was just we just trusted each other so whatever we tried we kind of just went with it because we really trusted each other and this and it soon came to pass i mean we soon realized everyone soon realized it was like that all over the show it was the tweedles it was it was john and reese Mm -hmm. it was the puppet it was cheshire cat and his and his team and it was queen and me each one of us was like a little separate family that worked together mostly. Right. And, and yeah. Alice being young, you know, she being a young a child at, at what, 10, 11, she was I always... I think she was 11 in, when we did in, the pilot. Right. She was always in awe, which was, you want Alice like that. Because we loved each other as people, that became part of our portrayal. So even though, for instance, just as a, just as a for instance, from my perspective, even though the white rabbit would make fun of the queen and be, feel like she didn't have his sense of style and his sense of taste and, you know, all that. But at the same time, I could do all that because I, underneath it was this love for this woman yeah. that the white rabbit had just as much as Patrick. You know what I mean? It, it, That's right. It right. translates. It's part of good acting, I think. Where yes, it is something yes. real and universal trans that's human that's there with the actor or that you mm-hmm. know the actor can conjure is there in the thing even though you don't you know you're not pl- I don't think White Rabbit and the Queen played tenderness very often a couple of <laughs> you know a few times yeah. but we didn't have to because it was underlying it was in the background all the time it, like a, you know I guess to sum it all up. We had a great time, and there yeah. were times when we didn't appreciate it because we had become, at times, very tired. Patrick used to play, play with his ears, you know, and that's <laughs> when we knew he was tired. You know, we, <laughs> we, Is that true? We, I didn't know that. Yeah, when, you know, when, you got, yeah when you got tired, you, you twist your ears. <laughs> <laughs> and so I always remember, I was like, uh-oh, Pat is going down. And I used and to have Queen pie. And when Queen was tired, she would start flubbing the words. She would get, she would get tongue-tied, right, Queen? Yes, I'd get tongue-tied. <laughs> the show does have really strong, strong fans. And when I meet someone who finds out that I was the rabbit, they'll read my bio or something in a show. It's interesting because they their demeanor changes because that's a character that they grew up with. And my demeanor changes because I realize I'm responsible for kind of taking care of them for that period of time when they were a little kid. That's right. They were you like know what I mean? kids. And so, yeah. 
and it's a it's a it's a honor it's an honored job to have had yeah like a big brother to us yeah (laughs) yeah yeah and it really means a lot it really does because you know for for someone who did grow up with it, it I it always meant a lot to me, you know, just to see you guys up on the screen, and it was like we were in a, some strange way. I I can only assume you've had other TV shows where you've watched when you were younger. You felt like family, so mm-hmm. it was great because um, they kind of kept Adventures in Wonderland up until 2005 at Epcot. I don't know if you remember this, but they had something called Interactive Wonderland that AT and T did. Yes. Yes. And you filmed it, Armelia, but it was with an entire different cast around you. And, yes, I did. And, and I did. And that was what I grew up doing because when we would go to the parks, you know, you would, you would <clears throat> call out to the TV screen what movie, what Disney movie, Disney princess movie was. And, mm-hmm. and then you'd say, oh, the Red Queen liked Aladdin or the Little Mermaid or something like that. And mm-hmm. you'd talk back. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, oh, my God. Funny. Oh, we worked all day and night. And I remember coming back on the five. Uh, the freeway on number five and it was dark and there's no light, (laughs) (laughs) you know, there's no lighting up there, up in the mountains, you know, and uh, it wasn't the rain. Yeah. And, and so I just thought, I can't believe I'm doing this. And it was with a different, like she said, a different cast, a different hatter and a different, you know, it was quite something, but uh, adventures at Wonderland got, on TVs that we have no idea that they were reaching there, even across no. the country. There were things that we did that were extracurricular. Like, I remember we did the Rose Parade, and I rollerbladed that, rollerbladed that entire parade. And um, it was so much fun because you're suddenly <laughs> with the fans. You know what I mean? You're yeah. Suddenly mm-hmm. right it's all with, different dynamic. Fact, I'm, in, I'm just having a memory that I forgot about where I had said to them, and they knew, they they. They didn't even need me to say this, um, that I wouldn't be rollerblading. I'd be riding on the float because, you know, the show was exhausting and that would be really hard. And I was on the float. But as soon as we we started to feel the love as we went down the, uh, the parade, it was clear that we needed to get right up to them. Remember, oh, yeah. you did too. You came down off the float. Everybody came down and started like, and I rollerbladed that whole parade and it went by like like you know a minute because it was there was so much love from all these little kids just dying to touch us and they right. couldn't believe we were real i don't yeah. know if you know this armelia i wanted to make sure i let you know but uh you have had a continuous presence in walt disney world since you left for adventures in wonderland so after interactive wonderland ended there was a new show called uh, The Tiki Room Under New Management where you played the goddess Aoa, the yes, tiki I goddess did. of disaster. And they just opened a new restaurant um, that is a tiki type of theme, and Aoa is still there. And when you order a drink called the Aoa, you get the uh, you get Aoa to start laughing and singing for you. And so your voice is still in the theme parks after all oh these years. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know that. <laughs> Nobody ever told me that. Well, now you – and I'm going to have to buy you an Aoa drink when you come back down to Florida. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just have three quick Disney questions I always ask my guests. So I'll ask the Donald yep. one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites? Oh, Who you and Broomsticks. Bimbo, the flying elephant. And Bimbo. Our, and our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Well, I, you know what? I, since I played the queen, it would be the red queen. If we could compare notes, you know. Uh, but that's, that is a good question. <laughs> For me, it would be Tinkerbell. And our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Rest your head, don't you cry. Oh, baby mine from Dumbo? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, that Dumbo is good to every time. Baby of mine. Love that song. I I love it when, uh, it's when you wish upon a dream, when you wish upon a star. I mean, I think that's true for everybody today, you, even adults. You just kind of stand and look up at the stars. I have know. to thank you both so much for coming on the show, and I hope you don't mind if I ask uh, if the Red Queen and the White Rabbit could lead us out of the show, maybe with a with a goodbye or so. <laughs> goodbye, sweet dreams. <laughs> that's from the Queen. <laughs> oh my word! Look at the time. 
absolutely could be serious. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't well, do it. I'm rabbit. I'm not serious right now. I'm having a great deal of fun with Tammy and the rabbit. <laughs> and to all of our adventure, adventures in Wonderland people, good night. Tape at the Disney MGM Studios, Lake Buena Vista, Florida.